Watching market makers, I'm Eric Schatzker. Activist investing is all the rage these days. Dan Loeb has forced Sony to consider an entertainment spinoff. Paul Singer triumphed in his proxy fight with Hess. And Bill Ackman can also claim victory now that P&G CEO Robert McDonald is gone. But according to the mid-year outlook report from proxy advisor ISS, our next guest's successful battle against the world's largest slot machine company, IGT, was the largest activist win of 2013 so far. So he knows that when it comes to Vegas, the house doesn't always win. He's Jason Ader, founder, CEO, and chief investment officer of Ader Investment Management. Jason, great to see you this morning. Yeah, thanks for having me. So in your opinion, having just triumphed at IGT, what are the ingredients of a successful activist campaign? Well, look, at the end of the day, you have one objective, and that's to get the stock price higher. And I think you really you know, need to look at what is causing a stock price to underperform and focus on those issues. In, in our instance, it was lack of discipline in capital allocation. You know, there was a lot of money spent, and it just wasn't generating the returns for shareholders that we thought it should. And there was a lack of discipline in corporate governance. Those were the two areas we had been focused on. And in the backdrop of what had been an underperforming stock, uh, we had a fairly sympathetic audience of uh, shareholders that were willing to listen to us. Why is it that activism seems more popular now than ever when stock prices are at records? There seems a little incongruity there, given the fact that to your point, right, this is a value strategy. You're trying to get the stock price up. Right. Well, that's, I mean, that's really a great question for the next 12 months. Will there be as much activism? You mm -hmm. go back, you know, six to 12 months ago, stock prices were in a very different place than they were today. You know, I, I look at, you know, lots of different stocks every day and try to think about, you know, is there an opportunity to take a position and do I have the ability, given where the stock price is, to make issues that would be relevant uh, and, and points that would be relevant as an activist investor? And it's a lot harder today. And, and so I suspect over the next 6 to 12 months, you know, there will be less activism given the run that we've seen in stock prices, with the exception of a few industry groups that have underperformed. And, and look at metals and mining, gold specifically. That's one area that's in distress right now. I suspect you'll see more activism there. So as an activist investor, your ultimate objective is getting the stock price up, as it should be. Mm -hmm. But how do you define victory? Because in the case of IGT, for example, you wanted three new board members. You ended up getting one. Is that victory enough? The victory is only defined, in my view, in stock price performance. You know, and, and you take uh, Jana recently, Jana Partners, and their run at Agrium. Agrium, sure. Okay. They didn't get any board seats, but the stock is higher. The, the company has the pressure now of, of, of both shareholders and the public on their performance. A lot of raised awareness at the very A lot least. of raised awareness. And in the end, the stock price is materially higher than it was when Jana got involved. So you it, wouldn't look at that and call that a failed campaign? No. Just because they didn't get what they wanted? I, I don't think so. I think that's, that's the misperception. A activism's victory is in the stock price performance that shareholders are willing and, and able to create by putting pressure on management. What then does the success of activism say about other value, passive value strategies? It really depends on the investor, though. I mean, I think there's many of investors out there who are very happy to be passive, like the relationships that they have because they're research-oriented. I, I come from a research background. It's nice to have a CFO or a CEO or a president who speaks to you each quarter and tells you about the business and you have a rapport with them. By being an activist, you jeopardize that relationship. And there's many, many successful money management firms who value that research relationship that aren't willing to cross the line. They're happy to have people like us out there but they're not willing to cross the line. Or perhaps just because somebody like yourself or a Dan Loeb or even a Bill Ackman can be successful as an activist doesn't necessarily mean that everybody should try to be one. I would agree with that. What about IGT? What further plans do you have for this company? You're still a shareholder, correct? Mm, yes. I, I'm, you, I mean, do you need to put more pressure I, I'm on very happy and right management now. to get the stock price up? Or do you think, uh, wait and see? I mean, the stock is uh, 18 and change, 18.50. You know, last summer when we got involved, it was around 11. So I'm very happy. And I think they're on the right path. And uh, ultimately, the stock price will be the best determinant there. What else are you looking at? Well, as I said, you know, where's their distress? Well, I have a, a tendency just to try to look at areas, you know, where there's uh, mispriced securities. And, and there's certainly a lot of distress right now in metals and mining. And, and uh, you know, that, that's a bit of a... You certainly don't want to catch a falling knife. You know, we've been very active looking in southern Europe, uh, Spain, 
Italy, Portugal, but even there, um, you know, we've seen, you know, prices uh, rebound sharply. So it's getting tougher to find, you know, the, the mispriced securities. So I think, you know, this will be a summer of, of, of research, maybe not a whole lot of activity. I mean, speaking of metals, it just occurs to me there was something akin, mm -hmm. I mean, not a concerted activist effort, but there was some grumbling at the very least about Barrick shareholders. Mm -hmm. Uh, another Canadian company, Agrium being one, uh, and the board was overwhelmingly re-elected. So it's not like, you know, these are slam dunk situations. You have to choose carefully. Don't you have to choose carefully. But but at the end of the day, most of the gold mining companies you'll find have been operating in a bubble, and these management teams have been horrible shepherds of capital for the shareholders. And over the next year, you will see continued declines, deteriorating returns, and and poor governance. What about elsewhere in the gaming world or quasi gaming, like? Zynga, for example. Right. Well, that's a. T I mean, that's a almost impenetrable company given the super voting rights uh, that that exist there. So uh, I, I don't really see that much to do right now in the gaming, lodging, leisure areas. I'm looking, um, and I'd be very interested in doing something in the restaurant space, in the retail sector. But the price moves have been. And you look at the, even the leading indicators numbers today. I mean, all the consumer companies have seen a very significant increase, increase in, in in stock price. Well, I can tell you, Jason, after your success with IGT, we will be watching, and when you finally decide. Which target you're going to choose? We'd love to have you come and talk about Great. it. Nice to Thank see you. you. Yeah, good to Thanks see you. Thanks very much, Jason Ader, uh, the founder, CEO, and chief investment officer of Ader Investment Management. According to ISS, the most successful activist campaign of the first half of 2013.